Hey everyone, it is Mike the Dad Nerd here. Amateur radio call sign Whiskey Zero Echo Golf Romeo W0EGR. So today, one of the things that I just fell in love with with ham radio was parks on the air, right? Taking your radio, getting out, going, getting the outdoors, going mobile, operating off battery power, setting up an antenna, and operating in the parks. But when I was first starting out, I really didn't know what I needed to take, what I should take. So in today's video, we're gonna cover what I take on a Parks on the Air activation and how to get you guys up and running. All right, so when I'm going portable, I have little kids and these activations are quick activations. Usually we're going to a park with a playground. My wife and the kids love to play, run around, look at the lakes, see all the nice new parks while I'm doing a really quick activation. So the name of the game for me is to make sure all my stuff is easy to access, ready to go, and can be deployed and taken down quickly. So for me, it's very consolidated. I have my radio, I have my bag, and I have my antenna set up that I can put in the car and quickly deploy up and take down super easily. So let's start to cover what I take. First of all, this is one of those cases from Harbor Freight. I love these cases, they're super affordable. And this case right here actually fits my ICOM IC7300. I use a full 100 watt rig when I'm going. Uh, for me, just getting started out in ham radio, I, you know, I, I don't want to invest in two different radios, one for portable, one for base operations. So for me, this is my home base radio that I pack up and take. And as you can see with these cases from Harbor Freight, they're great because it comes with that pluck foam. So you can really pluck the foam out, make the shape of the exact radio. I know this thing's safe. I would probably even travel with this in an airplane. I haven't yet. I just take it in the car. Uh, but it goes down into a nice carry case. Uh, by the way, these stickers are fantastic. You can actually get these off Etsy. Um, so just ordered a quick, you know, call sign uh, sticker there from Etsy, which I think is pretty darn cool. So IC7300 is the radio. Next, let's talk about antenna. Now antenna for me, that is something that has changed recently. Uh, when I started doing Parks on the Air, I started with a full in-fed half wave antenna that I would put up into a tree. So I would go to a park, try and find a tree, I would use a throw rope, throw it up over the branch of a tree, and have the base transformer of that antenna on the ground. I got fantastic results from that, but the only downside was, like I said, having kids, a lot of my activations need to be really quick. Being able to get there, set up, tear down quickly, the kids all of a sudden get hungry and want to go right away, um, so I can't stay for long periods of time. And so that was a lot of setup and tear down time. Not a lot, right, but still about five to ten minutes to get that antenna set up and the same to get it taken down. So what I did for my last two activations, and I've had really good success, is I actually went to a ham stick. So I have the MFJ336T. This is a tri-magnet mount. Uh, I throw this, we pull up to the parking lot, the kids get out, play the playground. I put this on top of the car, and then I screw in. I have two different ham sticks. I have one for 20 and one for 40 meters. Uh, screw that right in there, put on the appropriate whip on the top, and there's your antenna. And I have to say, I have been blown away by the performance of this ham stick. Later in this video, I will show you an example when I'm actually out doing an activation of how I have this all set up. And I'll also cover with you some of the results I'm seeing with the ham stick antenna. Because I was, you know, if you're like me, I was super skeptical that a short antenna like this can have good results. Um, and I have been absolutely blown away. All right, so next let's get into what is in my bag. What do I take? Now, this bag for me has been kind of adjusted over the last year of doing Parks on the Air activations. I used to take a lot more stuff. I used to be ultra, you know, redundant, have everything, and I've kind of trimmed it down into exactly what I need. So this will give you a good idea. First of all, the thing I usually have in my bag is my iPad. So with my iPad to log, I use the Hammers app. If you guys have not checked out Hammers, man, that is the ultimate logging app for Parks on the Air if you're doing it digital. There is nothing wrong with paper and pencil. That's how I started out. However, when you get back home, when you have a paper and pencil log, you have to go in and enter in all of that information. And again, for me, it's all about time saving, quick, easy activations. Um, and I don't have a lot of time to be entering in all that data. The Hammers app, I can instantly from the iPad, as soon as I'm done with the activation, export into an email on the iPad and send it off to the parks on the air coordinator for my region and have it all done. So when I get home, I have nothing else I need to do. Also with the Hammers app, the thing that I love, and again, later in this video, I'll show you the results, gives you an awesome map right away where all your QSOs were located all across 
you know, whatever region you're in. So a great map showing all your QSOs, which is something, it was an extra step that I usually had to do before I found the Hammers app. So go ahead, download the Hammers app, and then let's support them too. Give them a donation, subscribe to their Patreon, uh, because they are doing great work over with the Hammers app. So that's what I use for logging. Uh, attached to my backpack on the side here is usually my HT. I do take my HT. This is a Radiotity GS5B. Um, and so this is really just, uh, you know, I would use it for, we have a bunch of local repeaters around here just as an extra source of communication. It honestly doesn't get used too much during the activation. Um, but you could also, if you couldn't get cell signal where you're at uh, and you want to get spotted, you could, you know, have one of the guys on the repeater maybe spot for you. So if you can get access to a repeater, get someone on Simplex, you could actually have them spot you if, you know, nobody on the actual HF bands that you're using is able to spot you. All right, let's continue to look through here on the important stuff. So the important stuff for me, uh, you need to make sure, and, and this has been something I almost forgot one time, need your microphone. So I keep my microphone separate from the radio just to keep it easy. So make sure you have your microphone with you. This is just the standard ICOM uh, microphone. Pro tip, if you do run an ICOM IC7300, I have found that the magic settings for this microphone, I'm getting fantastic reports, uh, is 60% gain and the four setting on compression. So compression at a four and a 60% gain when you're using the hand mic. Uh, when I'm at home, I'm using an XLR microphone, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but with the handheld mic, 60% gain and a four on the compensation, or compression, sorry. All right, next very important aspect is the power cable. So what I actually did is I bought a spare ICOM power cable. So that way I don't have to unplug and bring the cord with me that's at my base station and undo all the wiring behind my desk. So I have a spare one. And then you guys are definitely going to want one of these watt meter and power analyzers. So these are super cheap. Amazon, 20 or 30 bucks. Get the one with Anderson power poles on the end um, because this is great for monitoring your battery usage especially if you're going on a camping trip where you're gonna be using maybe your full battery and you need to know how close you're getting. Uh, tells you how many amp hours you've used, what your watt draw is. Uh, this was something I didn't have in the beginning and I was always guessing how much power was left on my battery. Uh, it's just a, it's a great simple tool. So one end plugs into the battery, the other end plugs into the end of the power cord here and obviously this goes to the radio. So power is extremely important. As you start to get into the rest, really everything I've laid out here with the exception of, we forgot one major component here. Uh, this is the battery that I use. So this is a 20 amp hour from BioNO. Uh, BioNO power, these LIFO4 batteries are absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend them. Uh, I still carry with me for spare power and still use sometimes an SLA battery, a sealed lead acid battery. But the benefit of these BioNO, or, or really any LIFO4 battery, is that these can be fully depleted. So when you say, when it's a 20 amp hour, it truly is 20 amp hours. On your sealed lead acids, number one, the SLAs are a ton heavier. This thing's really light for 20 amp hours, extremely light. Um, on the sealed lead acids, you really should only be running those down to 50% depletion. Um, and again, that really comes into play when you have your, your watt meter here to know what you're running those down to. So if you have a 30 amp hour SLA, really you should only be running about 15 amp hours off of those batteries. So now that we have the battery out, everything here is the full setup. Now I actually have a lot more in here, but the rest of the things in here is really for redundancy. Um, two things I don't have out that are still actually packed away in the car, bring a comfortable chair and a comfortable portable table I would recommend. So I have a folding camping chair, I have a folding uh, table that gets into about, you know, half the size of a folding chair. Uh, bring those, because you want to be comfy when you're activating. Also bring a big water bottle. Um, and then some snacks. Those are, those are some really important things. Uh, if you have time between all your QSOs to grab a drink of water, always bring that. So again, everything we have set up here, this could be your full setup and you could be totally fine getting out, getting on the air and you would be set. But there's a few more things that I have in my bag that are just are peace of mind items for me um, that make me feel better in case one of these items were to fail. And so the very first part of extra stuff I run is an antenna. And I just took this off the winder and I put it back in my bag. So I need to wind it back up actually. But this is that half wave NFED that I was telling you guys about. So this NFED half wave, uh, I need to wind it back up. It's gonna be a mess to wind back up. But this is my backup antenna. 
So in the event that for some reason, you know, the kid steps on the whip and the whip snaps, the, the uh, ham stick isn't working for some reason, I always want to have a backup antenna. Uh, nothing worse than making a drive, getting out to do a parks on the air and realizing that one of your devices isn't working. So an extra antenna, uh, not necessary, but I would say extremely important because um, you never know what's going to happen. So along with this antenna, I have a few of these ground stakes. Uh, and this is obviously to stake off. If there's not enough space to do a sloper with my NFED, I'll do an inverted V and you need a bunch of these. So I have a bunch of these ground stakes just to stake off certain ends of the antenna. Always good to have with you. And then I go a little overboard on coax. Now, when I am activating from the car, usually I'm just in the trunk of the car. Uh, I set up my lawn chair, open up the back hatch when I'm using the ham stick. But if for some reason you want to be operating a little bit away from your antenna, always having coax is a good idea. And I bring two rolls of this. Uh, so I don't know if this is like 25, 30 feet of coax. Have another roll of that in here. Um, and especially that's great for the NFED half wave. You can get a little bit away from the antenna um, and then still be fine. So, but I bring two rolls. I've just, too many times I've run into coax going bad on me and uh, you never want to ruin an activation that way. All right. And then the last piece that I carry with me is my throw line. So I carry this throw line right here. So this is a tree throw line. This weight is specifically made for throwing into trees along with this line. It doesn't get snagged up in the branches. So when I'm using my NFED half wave over there, this is the first step. I run this around my head or actually it's side by side, throw this up into a tree, let it go over the other side, attach the end of the antenna and pull the antenna up into the tree. I really enjoy this style of deploying of an antenna. For me, it's really super simple and easy. But again, we talked about time saving. Ham sticks are probably the fastest thing you could set up. Second fastest, in my opinion, is an NFED half wave and throwing it into a tree. This takes really no time at all. However, you're dependent on trees being around you. And that's been the biggest thing for us is some of these parks that we go to, uh, the place where the kids can hang out and play or where the benches are, there's not really tall trees in my area to throw stuff into. So that may not work the best for you. Okay, two more items left. One I actually don't have with me because it's actually still in the car. I do bring a second battery. So I bring that SLA battery as my backup. You know, there are times where we all just make simple mistakes. You forget to charge your battery, something happens, uh, and you get out there and your main battery is dead and you have no power. So definitely bring a second battery. Doesn't need to be a big one, doesn't need to be the full size, but at least maybe you could get 30 minutes to an hour of operating in uh, to, to activate the park. So bring a second battery is my suggestion. And the last piece, something I don't see many operators bring, but I do every time, is, is I bring a set of headphones. Um, and this fell all apart when I brought out my antenna. Usually I keep these wound up. Don't judge me on my cleanliness. We just got back from an activation. So, uh, so yeah, bring a, bring a set of headphones. You never know when you're in a park, there could be birthday parties going on. There could be people around you. They just don't want to be bothered by hearing your radio all day. We're used to, and we love the sound of radio as operators, um, but other people don't. So make sure you bring a set of headphones. I don't usually run them, um, but if I was in a scenario where there were other people around, being considerate, you know, the biggest thing with parks on the air is number one, leave the place better than how you left it. Be good stewards of ham radio. Uh, you don't want to be the annoying guy with a radio that ruins someone's family reunion because you're over there yakking on the radio. Um, so a set of headphones can definitely help that. All right, so now that you have seen everything that I bring, I'm going to take you out real quick. Let's go look at what this looks like when I actually set it up. Again, a lot of this stuff was redundant. A lot of this stuff is back up in case one of the other items fails. So Let's go out and see how I set it up in the field. All right, good morning. So, you know, you've seen kind of what I pack and what I bring on these POTA activations. And I will say the way I've done POTA has really changed, especially with having two young kids. So a three-year-old and a four-year-old. So what we really like to do is come do these really quick activations. We'll find a park um, somewhere close to our house within an hour drive, preferably someplace that has a playground. I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, where is it? Way back there, there's a playground. So the kids are over there with my wife, they're playing. So we do a quick activation. So for me, the ham stick that I showed you guys, I just set it up on top of the car. And let me show you real quick. It's actually on a tri mag mount, just thrown right up there. Tri mag mount, I did this, uh, used this for the first time yesterday actually, and I just got amazing results. And talk about just being quick and easy. Set up in the parking lot. So this is kind of my setup here. So I set up, open up the back of the car, 
We get the Hammers app on the iPad. We run the IC7300. We have a 20 amp hour bio NO battery plugged into the little meter here so I can monitor how much power I'm using. And really just is such a great setup for quick and easy pod activations. It doesn't need to be anything complicated. I still do love doing my end fed halfway into a tree if we have time or if we're camping, I'm doing a more permanent setup than this. But I'll tell you the results I'm getting from this ham stick are absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, this is, this is my setup. I pop up the back of the car, set up a little chair, and uh, I activate for just a little bit while the kids are playing. It, it tends to work out really, really well. So that activation was a lot of fun. That activation only took 44 minutes. So my, again, I had my kids with me. They were with my wife. They were off playing. They got a little hungry. It was getting close to lunchtime, so we called it pretty early. So we only spent 44 minutes on the air, but we got 67 contacts. And 67 contacts, I'm going to pop up the map right now. Here's the map of where all my contacts were coming from. And as you can see, this was with the ham stick, and we were getting coverage across the entire United States. I actually think we would have gotten more West Coast if it wasn't so early in the morning here in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, the West Coast is two hours earlier than us, and I think they were still probably uh, sleeping or just getting their first cup of coffee and maybe not on the radio yet. But man, the last two days, we did two activations. This is the second one this weekend. And that one, uh, both of them were a lot of East Coast people. So again, both of those were in the morning. I think it might have had to do with the with the time frame because again, these ham sticks are going to be omnidirectional antennas. So it shouldn't have mattered where they were at, but the spread, the five nine reports I was getting, and one more thing I'll show you quick is N3FZ was kind enough to actually send me a video of what I sounded like from Maryland. So N3FZ is located in Maryland. Uh, I made contact with him during the activation, and this was what he was hearing from me, 100 watts, IC7300, into the hamstick antenna from Omaha, Nebraska, to Maryland. Take a listen. All right, thank you for the correction. Kilo Echo 4, Victor, X-Ray, Charlie, you are a 5454 in Omaha, Nebraska, Park K5656, QSL. You as well, 73, have yourself a great day. QRZ for Whiskey Zero, Echo Golf Romeo. So I really appreciated N3FC sending that over. Actually, I had never heard myself uh, from the other side of the radio before. So that was, that was really cool to hear. But anyways, guys, I hope that I can get you guys comfortable, ready to go with your first Parks on the Air activation. For me, Parks on the Air is my favorite aspect of ham radio. Love getting out there. Again, have fun with it. You don't need all of this stuff right away. Uh, but I think, of you know, obviously power, antenna, radio, are the necessities for what you will need when you get out there, but you can kind of start to build out your kit. Really find what works for you. Parks are different all across. Uh, my parks are a lot of drive-in. Sometimes you might have to drive in and then hike a and this might be too much for you. So you might want more of a, a backpack style with, I can fit everything in one backpack, smaller radio, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it gets you out into the parks, doing parks on the air with your ham radio. Again, I'm the dad nerd, W0EGR. Hit subscribe to the channel. A lot more ham radio stuff is going to be coming on this channel. Uh, I did a video, man, two years ago now, a year ago, when was that? With my first QSO ever in ham radio, right when I was first licensed. And I got a great response from all of you. And all of you said, where are the ham radio videos? So more ham radio videos coming, more activations coming, camping videos with ham radio, home antennas. You probably can't see it. My antenna is back and behind me going up into a tree for my QTH. But until I see you guys next time, tech on.